All right, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the settings that I think you should be aware of when you're setting up your brand new OnePlus Pad 2. Now, typically the first thing you wanna change is just your wallpaper. And the application that I prefer to use for my wallpapers is called Backdrops. It's completely free. So you can just go to the Play Store, you can download it, and it has a ton of awesome wallpapers to choose from. Um, now, you will have to deal with some advertisements here and there, but all in all, it's really not that bad. And like I said, they've got some great options to choose from as far as wallpapers go. Now, if we go back to the home screen here, something else I like to change is just the overall layout and how things look as far as the icons and the transitions, things of that nature. So what you can do, you can just press and hold on your home screen and down here towards the bottom, you can see you've got some options. So if you wanted to play around with the pre-installed wallpapers, obviously you could go to that icon there. And then you can click on the icon titled icons, click on that. And then this is where you can customize the appearance of your applications and how they look on the screen. So you can see you can change the shape and you can also change the overall size of the icon. So you can make it smaller. You can also go and make it bigger. And you just got some customizations as far as the overall appearance with the apps on the screen. So you definitely want to go in there and play around with that just to give things the overall look that you prefer. Now, if we go ahead, tap and hold on the home screen again, we can go back to that exact same place. And this is where you can also access different widgets. So if you want to change the clock layout, you can see you've got different options. You know, if you want to add a calendar widget right there on your home screen, you know, Google widget, contacts widget, this is where you can easily access those different options. So we'll go back again and then the transitions. Another thing I like to customize, uh, for example, when you're swiping through the different pages here on your tablet, you'll get a different animation with these different options. So it just shows you an example. This is the default, just a simple slide from left to right. This is the one I prefer, the roll. It just looks a little bit cleaner, in my opinion. Uh, you've got this one there. You got that one, that one there. So. Again, you've got some options as far as customization. And now if we go back, if you click on more, uh, this will give you some additional options. And one thing I like to have turned on is the drawer mode. Um, so as you can see, I've got it activated. And with that, anytime you're on your home screen, if you simply swipe up like so, it immediately takes you to all of your apps. So it's just a really quick and easy way to access whatever app it is that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and go back. We'll click more once again. And a few other things I like to have turned on, double tap to lock. Um, that's going to allow you to lock the screen rather than pressing the home button over here on the left. You can simply just double tap the screen anytime you wanna lock it. So for example, it locks the screen that easily. So now let's go ahead and talk about some of the shortcuts when it comes to navigating apps and things of that nature. Um, so let's go ahead and open YouTube, for example, and if you want to go into split screen mode where you're opening multiple apps at once, all you have to do is take two fingers and swipe down from the top of the screen, just like so. And now you can open a second app, for example, Google Chrome. Now you've got YouTube on the left. You can scroll as you wish. And you've got Google Chrome over here, which also has YouTube open. But if we just go to the main Google page like so, we can come in here, we can search whatever we want, so on and so forth. and if you click in the middle, that little dividing line there, you can simply resize and readjust the applications as needed. Now, another shortcut is gonna be taking a screenshot. Obviously, one way to do it is to press the power button and the volume up or down button. But another way to do it is to simply take three fingers and to swipe down from the top. So you can see we've got YouTube open. If I wanna screen grab, again, three fingers from the top, Come down just like that and as you can see it takes a screenshot and we can choose to share that screenshot or it'll just go into your camera roll now we talked about split screen view where you can open two apps at once so let's go ahead we've got youtube and then we've got google over here now if i wanted to open another app i could come over here and this little taskbar right here i could choose to open that um, i can go to all to pull up more apps and if i wanted to open up let's say backdrops the application for the wallpapers i can come drag it over here to the middle add it to that split screen view and now we've got three different apps open at the same time and you can simply adjust them as needed you can see i can come over on this side 
access the YouTube. In the middle, I've got Google. If I come over here and I wanna access the Backdrops app, I can simply press those three dots right there on each side, just like so, and I can adjust it as needed. Now you can also adjust these by swapping sides. So if you press the three dots, you can see it gives you some options right there. And you can just really just play around with this and position the apps. Now, another thing that's really cool is if you close out of this three application layout, just by pressing the home button, if you needed to access it once again, you can press these three lines down here and go to your recent tasks. And that exact same layout stays in the recent tasks ready to be reopened. So if you needed to access this once again, it's right there waiting for you. So now what we're gonna do is go into our general settings, just like so. And if you also own a OnePlus phone, one thing you wanna make sure you do is log into the exact same OnePlus account on your phone and on the pad too. So what you can do, you can just go ahead where it says log into your OnePlus account. You can click that, give that a second to load, and then you can go to unlock benefits. And this is where you have different options to log in and sign in to that OnePlus account. And that's gonna give you the best overall connectivity, uh, which we'll take a look at here in a second. So let's just cancel that for now. And now, if you are to set that up, what you wanna do is come down here to connection and sharing. And the beautiful thing about having a OnePlus phone with the Pad 2 is that anytime they're in close proximity, they're able to share the same 5G data. So if you're out and about with the Pad 2 and you don't have access to Wi-Fi, as long as you have your OnePlus phone, you'll have connection to the internet. And under the connection and sharing tab, this is where you can really customize how the two devices will interact. Uh, so for example, if you go under multi-screen connect, you can come down here. You wanna make sure you have auto connect turned on um, so that anytime the two devices are near each other, they'll connect as long as Bluetooth is turned on. Um, you can turn on the screen mirror function. And this is what will allow you to control your OnePlus phone with your tablet. So it'll actually duplicate the screen of your phone on your tablet and you can control everything directly from the tablet. You can also sync your notifications. So every notification that comes up on your phone will also appear on the tablet. So that way you don't miss anything. Uh, if we come back, we can take a look at content sync. And this is just gonna sync a lot of the content between the devices. For example, photos, videos that you take on your phone they'll be able to be accessed from the tablet. So for example, if you have your phone, you take a picture, you might wanna go into Lightroom to edit that picture. And generally it's gonna be easier to edit on a larger screen like the Pad 2. So again, you can take it with your phone and then immediately access the photo on your tablet for easier editing. So you definitely wanna check out this connection and sharing tab if you also have a OnePlus phone. So next up, let's go to the display and brightness tab. And one thing I like in here is the option to choose between light mode as well as dark mode. So you can see, you can choose whichever one you personally prefer. So let's actually set it back to light mode for now. And what you can actually do is you can choose a schedule for the device itself to switch from light mode to dark mode. So at nighttime, maybe when you're using the tablet in bed, you prefer to have the dark mode on so that it's not so bright. You can actually just go where it says schedule right here you can click that and then this is where it gives you the option to choose a desired schedule. Um, if you want to make it easy, you can just click sunset to sunrise and basically during the day you'll use light mode and at night you'll use dark mode or you can go to custom and you can choose your specific time of day that you want the tablet to switch over. So let's actually go back. There's a few other things that I like to take a look at in here. Um, the image sharpener and the video color boost. I just go ahead and turn those on just to try and get the best overall image out of the display. I'm not sure how much difference they make, but again, I just go ahead and turn them on just to be safe. And then something else you'll probably wanna change is the automatic screen off. I think by default, it's set to about 30 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. I like to have mine at five minutes. Uh, that way you don't have to deal with the screen turning off quite as frequently. So we'll leave that at five minutes. Um, you can also choose to set the screen attention to on. And that's really cool. I guess it'll use the selfie camera to determine if you're actually looking at the screen. And based upon that, it'll keep the screen on if it detects your eyes. And something else you'll probably wanna take a look at is the screen refresh rate. The Pad 2 does have a variable refresh rate up to 144 Hertz. 
so that's going to allow everything to be very fluid very smooth when you're scrolling through the tablet but what i like to do is actually put it on auto select and that's going to make sure that the tablet is deciding what the refresh rate should be based upon how you're using the tablet and ultimately that's going to give you the best battery life now if you want to put it on high and just max out the refresh rate at all times you do have that option uh, but again i prefer auto select because that's going to give you the best overall battery performance so now we're actually going to go to the sound tab and in here you've got some really cool options to play around with you've got the spatial audio feature um, and if you're using the tablet to watch a movie do some gaming here and there i do recommend turning this feature on it just adds a little bit more depth to the overall audio um, it does give you great audio to begin with you have a six speaker setup uh, but yeah experiment with the spatial audio like i said it gives just a little bit more depth to the audio which is great for things like watching movies and then also you have this called holo audio um, if i pronounce that correctly and this does a great job of allowing you to hear sounds come from different directions so if you're watching a movie and you've got the main audio just giving you that universal sound then if you get a notification the notification will sound like it's coming from you know one side versus the other and it just gives you spatial awareness i guess you could say when it comes to the overall sound as a whole so next up we're going to go to the notifications tab and one thing i like to have turned on is the hide notification on lock screen option um, so this way if you're getting notifications whether it's messages emails if someone grabs the tablet and they just look at the lock screen they can't really see any of the details of that notification so next up let's go to the security and privacy tab definitely some useful features in here for example you've got the ability to hide specific apps so if you plan on sharing this tablet with your children you can choose to hide specific apps that you might not want them to have access to so you can click that and it allows you to set either a numeric password or a pattern password like what you see here and then you can just simply go down the list and you can choose which apps you want to hide and in order to access those apps you'll have to put in that designated password so that's definitely very useful so let's go back once more and then you have the private safe all right and this is where you can choose to hide specific documents whether it's photos written documents whatever the case might be you can choose to hide them in this specific area and you can only access those files using the face unlock or whatever password you set up so that's just another way to kind of safeguard the tablet and to keep other people from seeing things that you don't want them to see and then another tab to check out as far as safeguarding your tablet especially when it comes to children is the accessibility and convenience tab so if we come in here this is where you actually have a dedicated kids mode and this will allow you to choose specific apps that you want them to only have access to so if there's certain games or learning apps that you want them to have access to you can choose to add those in here and you can also set time limits for how long they can use the tablet at one specific time aside from that i also like to go into the battery tab and in here you can set a few options like the smart charging option and basically what this is going to do is learn your charging patterns and the tablet will use that to charge itself more efficiently so if it notices that you take it off the charger at a specific time it'll try to wait to charge to 100 percent capacity up until that time that you generally take it off the charger if that makes sense and overall that's going to help prolong the battery life of the internal battery and then you also have the option of setting a charging limit um, so if you want you can choose to have the tablet only charge up to 80 percent uh, which will also help preserve the overall battery life something else that can help extend battery life is setting an automatic schedule for the tablet to turn itself on and off and that's going to be under the accessibility and convenience tab if we scroll down you can go to schedule power on and off and you can set a specific schedule for the tablet to automatically turn on and then automatically turn off so if you know you wake up every day at 7 a.m you can set it to turn on at that time and then you go to bed at maybe 11 p.m you can set it to turn off at that time so overnight the tablet isn't on and it's not wasting battery life next up let's talk about some of the options you have with the oneplus stylo 2 this is the latest stylus that they have available and the way to connect it to the pad 2 you've got a magnetic section right on the top and you can simply take the stylus 
kind of feel around until you feel it snap into place and then that will connect it this is also how you charge the stylo um, so you just attach it to the pad too and it'll charge itself up and then it'll also connect itself and once you go and remove it from the stylus it's automatically connected and you can use it to navigate you can use it to draw you can take notes things of that nature and then if we go back into the settings and go to system and update and then go to stylus this is actually where it tells you some of the features that you have with the stylo 2. Uh, for example the double tap to switch you can double tap on the stylus to switch from different tools i'll show you guys how that works here in a second you can swipe down from the right corner to take a quick note i'll also show you how that works and then you have screen off note taking as well um, so first let me show you the quick note taking from swiping down from the right corner just like so you can see it immediately opens up a note and i can do whatever i need to do and then if i double tap just like that towards the front of the stylus it'll switch to the eraser and i can start to erase whatever i started to write just like so and then once that's gone i can double tap again and it switches back to the pen and then like i said you've got screen off note taking so if the tablet is locked it's just sitting on your desk and you have a spur of the moment idea you can reach for the stylus immediately just start typing just like that and it'll open up a note so that you can come in here and start writing down whatever it is that you want to write so just an easy way to access your notepad with the tablet from a locked screen another option you have in the settings system and update stylus is the presentation mode so if you come in here and you turn that feature on you can use the stylus like a digital laser pointer so if you actually take your finger and hold it on the stylus towards the front you can see it pulls up a digital laser pointer and i can bring attention to whatever i want and then on top of that you can use the stylo 2 to draw annotations as well so for example if i wanted to pull up my most recent note all i would have to do is double tap on the stylo and then i can come and i can draw to bring attention to you know pretty much whatever i want and then to get rid of it I can just double tap again like that. So these are useful tools that can come into play uh, again for presentations and things of that nature. Next up, we're going to talk about some of the options you have with the smart keyboard, which you can see right here. And this is definitely a step up from the keyboard that was available for the OnePlus pad. As you can see, the touchpad is a lot larger, which makes it easier to navigate. And overall, it's just better. And it's really easy to connect to the pad too. pretty much just line it up and it snaps into place magnetically just like that. And then you also have the option to disconnect it and to use it remotely thanks to Bluetooth. So that's actually what we're gonna do so I can show you some of the features. That way you can see what's happening, happening on the tablet as well as on the keyboard. So for starters, it's just like a laptop. You can use the touchpad. It brings up the cursor and you can, you know, navigate to wherever you need. And then if you take two fingers, you can swipe from left to right to access different pages. And then similar to the tablet itself, if you use three fingers and swipe down like that, it will also take a screenshot. Something else you can do, for example, if we're inside of YouTube and we take three fingers and we swipe up like that, it'll take us to our home screen. And then if we go back and we take three fingers, swipe up and hold, it'll actually take you to your recent tasks. So you can easily switch between different applications like so. And then something else you can do is you can open a floating window by taking four fingers and kind of pinching them together. It's a little bit tricky, but if you kind of just do like that there, you can see it turns that current application into a floating window application uh, that you could possibly have open along with other applications as well. So that's just a brief glimpse into some of the settings and features that you should be aware of when it comes to the OnePlus Pad 2. Hopefully you guys found it to be helpful. If so, consider subscribing as well as liking the video. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.